Imagine examining the extensive letters, photographs, scrapbooks and diaries of people involved in the civil rights movement, or immersing yourself in the lives of those living in imperial China through artifacts, objects and original drama scripts from the Ming and Qing dynasties, or gaining insight into the decision-making and production processes of the long-running cultural British television program The South Bank Show. The primary source collections at Leeds University Library, many of which can be easily accessed online, can provide you with those opportunities and much more. Primary sources provide direct evidence of the time period, population or topic being researched. They can be physical objects and artefacts as well as documents. Some examples include patents, statistical data, diaries, photographs, interviews, court records, play scripts, performances and paintings, and can be useful to students from all disciplines. Primary sources offer you the opportunity to use, analyse and interpret original material, adding a potentially unique perspective to your academic work. Current students Bridget and Janina share the very different ways they have used digitised newspaper collections. The primary sources I used were the newspapers um, through the library, so I used the um, Nexus site. Using the newspaper specifically gave me a unique perspective because um, this assignment in particular, like this piece of coursework, it's kind of done, so it's a team project and we are, it's slightly competitive against other teams. So we're all trying to build this drone. And if we're just using something like Google, just straight up Googling for drones, we're all going to end up with the same, um, like we're all going to end up looking at the same aircraft and vehicles. And then when we're making certain decisions, it means that um, our kind of decisions would all be made the same way. So I felt like having a different place where I was going to for resources as opposed to what I assume other team members would be kind of getting that good perspective. So I have used newspaper for my dissertation and my dissertation topic was comparative analysis of uh, representation of Rohingya women in Bangladeshi and UK newspapers. While working on my dissertation, I was initially looking at Bangladeshi newspaper and its representation on Rohingya women. But then I have realized that I'm not doing anything new. I have to try to broaden my horizon. I have to get something new. And then I have looked at the newspapers of UK to get a new perspective. And to get access to UK newspaper, I uh, went to library website and I got access to all those, uh, those online newspaper articles and then I have realized that yes there are very specific differences and specific type of framing in UK newspaper and Bangladeshi newspaper and when I compared it it gave me uh, something new to my dissertation topic and it gave uh, it also helped me to get a very unique perspective that uh, no one uh, looked at and so I think without um, like uh, looking at newspapers of UK, I would have done something really uh, less significant uh, than what I have uh, done so far now. So yes, uh, it was really helpful for me. Many of our collections are available in both digital and original formats. Students Holly and Kelsey share their different experiences of using digitised primary sources from our special collections as a starting point which sparked their passion for research. The primary source that I used was MS Brotherton 16, which is a 15th century prayer book. I used it for an essay for the research, research methods module of my course. Um, so I was looking at how the marks of ownership and use uh, showed the cultural significance of the item and um, what they could tell us about how it was used. Because of the way that books were produced in the Middle Ages, it's very different to now. Um, very often items are unique and being able to see that item in, in person or online as well 
gives you a much more of an idea about how it was used, what its significance was, that you just can't get from looking at a printed edition. Unless you actually look at the manuscript, you can't necessarily get an idea of where on the page the image is or how it would have sort of impacted the person reading that. So being able to see something um, in its original format is very, very useful. I think it kind of also just replicates the experience that the person originally reading it would have had. And there's something quite it's hard to put into words. It's quite an emotional experience seeing a manuscript in person because you're like, wow, this is a really old thing. And people have been looking at this for hundreds of years. It's incredible. Um, so I work with the Leeds General Cemetery collection, uh, which is a collection that encompasses a, a good hundred year chunk of history um, of the Leeds General Cemetery, which you might know as St George's Field on campus. But when I was first an undergrad and I was looking at how I was going to write a whole scary dissertation, coming across the fully digitised burial registers was such a lovely way to have data available. It really helped me overcome the kind of fear and intimidation of using primary sources. And I ended up writing my entire undergrad dissertation about the Leeds General Cemetery, its history and what its history tells us about death in the in Victorian Leeds. Um, I then went on to... From that undergraduate work, I realised that a huge proportion of the people buried in that cemetery are still one infants. And I assumed that we would know a lot about that, um, but it turns out that we don't. I ended up doing a master's dissertation, which focused on um, kind of stillbirth as it was represented in newspaper reports in Leeds in the same period. Uh, and now I'm pursuing a PhD. I would absolutely recommend using digital primary sources, especially at that undergraduate level. It really widens the source base that you can use. So I think people sometimes forget that when you're an undergraduate, it's not the same as being a full time researcher and you don't have the same resources or time to be running up and down the country going to physical archives. By using digital, by using digital primary sources, I was able to look at so many different places and build a much stronger dissertation than I would have been if I'd been limited just to what I could physically access. Many of our primary sources are digitised, making them easy to access online through the library website. To find out more, go to the Search Help section of the library website, where you will find guides to and lists of our primary source collections, as well as information on how to contact the library if you need expert guidance. So do think about making use of these amazing resources for your academic work. Thanks for watching.